look, if the world is going to reject the gospel, that's fine. But evangelicals, you're not giving them the gospel. What's up, YouTube, and welcome back, 1517 Films. It has been way too long, a year plus, I don't know. So welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I am always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today is an awkward conversation, but today we're talking about Evangelical Pride Month. Stick around. <laughs> In the year I've been gone, I've already had one platform taken away from me, and I don't want that to happen again. So my crime was wrong think and brilliant sarcasm. That was my crime. So I don't want to lose this platform either. So this, let me be clear, this is inside baseball. This is a conversation between and amongst Christians, not Christians and the LGBTQ plus community. This is not about their pride month. That's just a catalyst for the conversation that we as Christians need to be having. But you can't escape it. So let's sit down and talk about it. It's June. It's Pride Month. Everywhere you look, every platform, every TV commercial, every... I noticed this the other day, driving to Fort Wayne and back. Every billboard. The rainbow in Pride is everywhere. Likewise with evangelicalism in every aspect of their doctrine and practice, pride is everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. And I wish that were not the case. I wish it didn't have to say that, but it's true. And so you see this counter rebuttal that attacks and doesn't evangelize. It's what you see out of evangelicalism is the Pharisees getting ready to throw the stones at the adulterous woman and not the Lord sitting down at a well talking to an adulterous woman? Marked difference. Pride Month to the evangelical is very much, I am going to spend more time focusing on the rainbow glitter sparkle in somebody else's eye than the rotting plank in my own. If this past year of being gone from YouTube has taught me anything, it's that I have both eyes filled with monumental planks that I have to address. It's part of the reason I've been gone. Just embarrassment and unworthiness to talk about theology publicly when it has become painstakingly obvious that I am an egregious sinner. Getting divorced? Having a hoe phase? These are not things that Christians do. Except that they are. And that's the difference between faith in Jesus that clings to his promises and the pride and arrogance of evangelicalism, which says I'm still not like that sinner over there. I am. I am. I'm, I'm the one in the back too embarrassed to even look forward. And all I can think to say is, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. But faith, because it clings to the promise, assures me that there's nothing more in heaven and on earth that Jesus delights in than having mercy on sinners. So if we as Christians can engage our world the way Jesus gently engaged the woman at the well, well, this is these are the these are the analogies that are perfect. The woman caught in adultery being stoned by the Pharisees and the woman that is an adulterous woman at the well. Why? Because it doesn't matter if we're talking about the birds and the bees or the bees and the bees or the birds and the birds or the birds that used to be bees and the bees that want to be birds and 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 the butterflies that self-identify as Apache tac helicopters. It doesn't matter. The issue is adultery. In, in whatever form it takes, that's the issue. And we are all capable of it. And we all engage in it. If not physically, then mentally, Jesus says. Jesus amped that law to 11 when he says, even if we think about it. 
let alone those of us that actually have engaged in it and have had to go and admit to what we've done to our pastor for the sole purpose of hearing the words, you're forgiven, which are amazing words to hear. So if we could please stop with the arrogance and the memeing and the whole shebang, if we could just stop arguing about the rainbow, because evangelicals, you get that wrong too. And here, let's, let's wrap this up. That's how it starts at the beginning of June. That's how we're going to end this one, is with that rainbow. The rainbow is a promise sealed in water in God's word, because how else do you get a rainbow if not through water? Fast forward to 1 Peter 3.21. The water of Noah's flood is, to borrow from the Greek, an archetype of our baptism. A pledge, a promise, a seal in water and the word. Remember Ephesians 5. Having been sanctified by the washing of water with the word. If we could talk about how we are sinful by nature, hence the reason Christ came into this world and included in his divine nature our human nature, if we could talk about the condemnation of him on the cross in our place and how he buries us into that, raises us by the power of his resurrection to newness of life and we are intimately connected to him. And as a further pledge, he feeds us his body and his blood to prove that he is good. Look, if the world is going to reject the gospel, that's fine. But evangelicals, you're not giving them the gospel. You're just hitting them with the law and saying, believe the gospel. You can't believe the gospel when all you're giving them is law. That's essentially the monumental difference, and that's the pride of it all, is that they don't recognize that they don't understand human nature, they don't understand original sin, they don't understand the sacrifice of Christ on the cross and how it is actually given to us through physical means as a promise sealed in water and the word, just like that rainbow that they like to talk about during Pride Month. I say, let's talk about that rainbow. Let's talk about God's promises in water and word. Let's talk about being born again. Because we were all of us, you, me, everybody, born that way. Sinners. And that is not cool with God. And he sent forth his son in our flesh to be our savior. Yes, does an unbroken conscience need the law? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean you have to be a prick about how you deliver it. You can deliver the law by applying it to yourself. I'm an adulterer. But that is not my identity. It's not how I self-identify. Well, that is how I self-identify. But Jesus says, I have a new identity sealed in the fact that I've been born again out of that nature. Pro the problem is being born a certain way, and we're all born that way. The solution is the same for all of us. Be born again. And evangelicals, you really need to learn how to have a born-again conversation without making it a law and an act of obedience. It is a means of grace and a gift of God. So stop it with the Pride Month. Get your theology together, and we can change the world. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.